Yesterday I was watching a stream from a top player in the US and he shared one comb that he likes to play more and more and he got very good results with it. For instance, we can see like he managed to make first place here and here as well. And in fact, I decided to try it, to give it a try yesterday. So I made four games in a row. I hard forced this comp and you can see I managed to get first here. I managed to get first here with the same comp or something very similar. It's another type of version of the comp. And I have this one here, first place and second place here. So honestly, this comp is extremely, extremely powerful. And actually, I should not say this comp because yeah, you have two versions of this comp. So I should say rather these comps and actually that's one of the strong part of this comp is like if you are contested you can try to adapt with an other version and still come up on top. For instance on this one I was contested I wanted to play Sona and I saw someone else was playing Sona so I went to Talia instead and I managed to grab a first place even though technically speaking I was contested. By the way, I take this opportunity to say that I have a private Discord and I already shared this comp yesterday and I already shared the results. This private Discord is meant for the people who support my channel by becoming a member. So if you're interested in supporting my content because you like it and helping me in growing this channel because I have to pay editors and, and things like this, then check this membership. If you want, you can join for three euros per month. You will have access to a private weekly video where I talk about the meta so every week you also have access to emotes and badges you can use in the comments of the video. I will definitely see your comment if you do this. Then for six euros per month, you have access to the Discord I just showed where here, every time I see a top player spamming a new comp, something or a new strategy or a new way of playing the game, I immediately share it on Discord. And after I make some tests and later, usually it's one, two days later, I make the video. So if you really want to have this kind of information much before anyone else, then do it because I'm going to tell you this comp I'm sharing, we can even check on Meta TFT, it doesn't exist. This comp doesn't exist on the list yet, right? So I feel you, so I, I don't see any um, multicaster reroll. I see the Timo version, which is actually the wrong version. You should not play multicaster Timo. You can see the, the win rate is bad. It's not about Timo. It's really not about Timo. If you play Timo, you would not play multicaster correctly. But except that, there's literally no multicaster Sona or multicaster uh, Talia. The strategist Talia, I guess this is with double trouble, but uh, you can see like it's, it's trash. If you want to join, because I can provide you the best comps at the right moment, like two, three days, or even four days before the meta catches up and you can earn like 500 uh, LP. Uh, you can have this kind of scores just because you play something that's not contested and overly broken. And yeah, that's how you climb fast. So let's get into the comp. You have two versions. I'm going to start with the Talia version. So Talia version is when you want to reroll Talia, obviously. Um, you want to reroll Talia at level six. Because she's a two cost, you can also reroll for Swain and Galio. Uh, this will help you to have a very good strong line, a very, very strong mid game. And then after you can push level 7, then push level 8. And then after you can try to have Velcos 3 because um, one of the specificity of uh, multicaster is everyone is a carry. So Talia obviously is your main carry, but Velcos 3 or Sona 3 depends on whatever you touch. Or maybe you can even have Sona 3, right? Uh, if you're really lucky and you have, uh, you're not contested and you have tons of gold. Then, yeah, you, you will see like Talia will deal 10,000 damage, uh, Velcos will deal 8,000 damage. So really don't sleep on these two units. That's why chalices are actually very, very valuable in this comp. I would even say chalice, uh, try to have one uh, or maybe two. And then after, this is where it becomes a bit trickier. You still want to have at least a Shoujin on Talia uh, so she can cast faster, obviously. Um, one more thing. Four multicaster is a big power spike and you really want to play this because it allows Talia to have one more target to one shot. So this is why uh, four multi multicaster is so important. And this is why you can't play with double trouble because if you play with double trouble, you kind of have to give up these two units and you have another Talia and then maybe another Velcos, I don't know. But it's not worth it. You need to have four multicaster, all right? Then after your front line, uh, in this case, since potentially you have swing three, it will be your main uh, tank, right? And if you don't have Sora, Sona uh, 3, it's two stars. If you don't have stuff for her, you want to have the Demacia, so uh, the Radiant Emblem on Jarvan. This is very important. But if Sona is your second carry or your main carry, you really want to have the Radiant Emblem on her. 
So speaking of Sona, this is the second version, which is also extremely strong. I think uh, like I won with Talia, I won against this version, but I think it was all about positioning because uh, as you know, Sona uh, deals a big AOE. So if you spread your team properly, uh, her effect is less powerful than Talia. But uh, anyway, both comps are very, very strong. Don't worry about it. Don't try to force one on the other. Just play whatever the game gives you. If you don't have Talia, if you don't have Swain, then go level 7 and play Sona. This is also an excellent late game comp. So Sona, like I said, uh, if you have Sona 3, if you play around Sona, you want to make sure that she's the one that's elite from Demacia and she gets a Radiant item. So you want to have a Shoujin that extremely valuable on her. You want to have many chalices. Velko is also can be your second carry, like I said earlier. Uh, if Sona can make 15k damage per, per fight, Velkos can make uh, at least half of it without any uh, items except chalices, right? So really, really important. Um, in that case, if you want, don't want the Radiant item on Sona, you can either put three items on Javan or just one. Uh, but if you put two items on Javan and Sona is not three stars, Javan will get the Radiant item and you might have some trouble in the mid game. You really want to have Sona to have all the Radiant items. I really like to build something I didn't say earlier. I really like to build Zizrod Portal because anyway, I don't know how to use any kind of uh, bow except if I have static. Uh, but sometimes like that was a game I had three bows. So I had to make like two Zizrod and, and one static. And honestly, I'm going to say this. This comp is a burst comp. It's not a comp like, I don't know, Invoker that drags a long time and before you can finish targets little by little. Now, this comp is about in five seconds, the game can, the fight can be closed already. And having a ZZ rot can help you having that extra five seconds that you need to finish off the main targets. So really, I like this item. Uh, don't, don't hesitate to spread your team if it's necessary, if there's a lot of AOE. Jarvan, you always want to make sure Jarvan is in front of the main carry. That way he can jump and stun the carry. And if the team is packed on this side, you want Sona here. If the team uh, opponent team is packed on this side, obviously you want Sona here. That way she has a much bigger uh, AoE uh, potential. So now let's talk about the early game. That's really important. Um, I give you a couple of ideas you can have in early game. You can have, for instance, a Shurima. I really like this one if you manage to have a two-star Renekton um, because it will be very difficult to kill. Like I, Honestly, you have a Renekton with these items. It's almost impossible to lose fights. Uh, this is way too powerful. And then behind you have uh, three Shurima and you have Multicaster. So just to make you understand, Multicaster is mandatory if you want to play a Talia. If you don't have Talia, uh, if you don't have a multicaster, don't even try to play Talia as your carry. She will do nothing. Multicaster, too important. Way too important. Like, I prefer to have not Cassiopeia, but even another Bruiser. So I don't have uh, Shurima. Uh, but yeah, like, I really, it's really important to have multicaster. Then after, uh, this is more like mid game. Uh, for instance, a level 6. This is very, very powerful level 6 um, comp. So, the thing is, set is the only, if I'm correct, is the only early game unit that bumps. And because of that, then it will trigger the passive of Talia. So that actually increases a lot of your damage. And also another thing I want to say, having two Talia on the team, if you have multicaster, is extremely good. But you have to make sure that they don't have the same mana. Like for instance, if I have Talia here and here, that's useless. I prefer, instead of having an Atalia, um, I don't know, Frontline, uh, Sorcerer, whatever, right? But the second you have a Talia that has a tier like this, for instance, or not a tier, but a bow that works as well, it's extremely good because they will cast their ability on different timings, okay? And since it's on different timings, one, I mean, each other is going to... Uh, trigger the passive of the other right and this is how you like, can multiply your damage by two but if you don't have this if it's like this then you don't have uh this um this synchronous i don't know how to say it a way of triggering the passive of talia so very very important so if you have a shojin obviously you have no problem and like this you literally win almost every game uh mid game fights all right Obviously, if you have two stars, if you don't have two star units, don't even try. I mean, you will lose some fights against people who have like a, too, too big of a, of a unit, of a team. The other way to play, um, which is 
requiring a bit more uh just uh the three cost units is with four multicasters so you can have swen 2 galio 2 timo 2 talida 2 velcos sona in this case you play four multicasters like i said that allows talia to have one more target so one more passive so that's why it's even better and here i'm using because here the only problem i have with this mid game comb is sometimes you're lacking a bit of front line so i like to put timo front uh, he gets shield from strategist um, and yeah that's it just buy you some time so now i want to talk about the augments because i think there are some baits with this uh with the augments and because of this bait uh, it makes people not win the game properly and i'm going to explain very very carefully here what i really like to have with this comp is to have more items uh, the more items you have the more side carries you can create the more front line you can create um, this comp loves having like tons of items and this is why uh, for instance I, uh, augments that gives you items so here i put latent forge uh, for now we still have the <laughs> we still have the win rates but we have to wait uh, i guess uh, i mean starting next week i guess we won't have any win rates but anyway uh, 4.11 this augment is insane uh, the other thing i really like to have is since most of the time you don't want to build things like uh gunblade because if you have gunblade it just makes your team having less burst damage and like i said the most important part is bursting so you don't want things like a uh, gunblade uh, archangel uh, no 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 you don't want this you want rabadon spell crit uh shojin or blue buff and boom beginning of the fight you did it half of the team of the enemy and this is how it close fights so this is why i think healing orbs is extremely valuable as by killing uh, the teams you make your front line last longer since most of the time your back line is safe you have no problem with the back line just heal your front line you will win that way and then last thing i really like uh, this one also has a high win rate uh, as we can see here unified resistance uh, i mean it's free uh, if we look at here it's free uh, defensive stat on everyone so obviously um this is just so easy to have there's no bad side about it, so just defensive stat on everyone. Okay, let's go about the gold augment. So you see the three augments, and you might think, oh yeah, this is obvious. No, <laughs> the, don't pick these augments. These are trash. You don't care about having one multicaster because you want to play Timo because it gives you strategist and also anti-healing a bit. You don't want perfect repetition because this means that your Sona needs to cast six times and by the way, the multicast, uh, so uh, the second or third cast that comes right after the first one, don't count. They don't count. You need to have Sona casting six times to gain 60 uh, ability power. So obviously, this is trash. Uh, don't even play that. This is not the scaling fight. You want burst, so not this. And you can see, like, uh, the ring rates are trash. And strategist, no. I mean, what's the point? Uh, yeah, you gain one more strategist. Cool. Uh, 15 more uh, AP and a bit more shield useless you can have much much better than that so don't pick these augments these are baits instead you want to pick these ones so jewel lotus you have multiple carries so if they all can crit then that just makes everyone even stronger so jewel lotus one of the best uh here the stats are not that great but because um this is like overall stats but this augment for multicaster is insane infusion kind of the same uh the stats are trash but since you want Talia, Velcos, uh, and uh, Sona to cast as fast as possible, this is good. This is good, actually. And Know Your Enemy, this is one of the best augment overall. Uh, has high win rate, can fit everywhere, so this is can augment. But like, like, like I said, uh, having more items is also good augment. Like things like Portable Forge, uh, more components, uh, this kind of stuff. They are also good to take, okay? Uh, these are just like three combat augment I want to show uh, because I think they are very relevant. And finally, Prismatic. Um, it's very easy. Obviously, you don't pick uh, you don't pick uh, Multicaster Soul. I think that's called like this or strategies things. Like if the gold is not good, like the Prismatic is even worse. So don't pick them. Instead, you want to have these three if possible. March of Progress. It allows you to... Be level 7 without spending gold. So this is like, you can be level 7 with 100 gold and this is where you will make your 3 stars. And then once there are 3 stars, you will be naturally level 8. And then you can find your Shen, you can find your Rise, and so on. So this is like the best omen for 3 star, uh, I mean for 3 cost reward, not 3 star, but I mean you made 3 stars, but whatever. 
uh, think fast at stage two and three, extremely valuable because at stage two, uh, I mean, at stage three and four, because at stage three, if you play Talia reroll, you can easily reroll and have Talia, Swain, Galio, and then after you don't lose a single fight for the rest of the game, or you do that at stage three, four, two, and you can reroll for Sona, uh, Velkos, and uh, Shen that you can add right after. And finally, Create Pact is kind of similar to March of Progress. You can be level 7 very, very fast, and you stay level 7 forever to find your Sona, Velcos, all of that. So, again, these three augments, if you see this and you know this comp, you pick it, you stop, you take your brain, you put it on the table, and you just go straight for Sona, Talia. You don't even think about it. You don't even think. I mean, okay, think fast. You kind of have to think, but whatever. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, Legends. Uh, okay, so I'm using this. I think it's a meta TFT. Uh, they made a tier list, and I'm going to explain legends. To stay fate, obviously, more items allows you to have the items that you want. Um, it will be definitely reworked uh, next patch or very soon because I don't think that that's uh, healthy for the game to stay like this. You are only interested in Pandora's items, Pandora's items too. Uh, Pandora's box is trash. Don't pick it. Um, it's a bait most of the time. Item grab bag, item grab bag two or three are okay only if you have these two, okay? Um, but yeah, and Ziggs, obviously you don't want that. Um, Orn, I'm, I played Orn yesterday and I'm loving it. I'm going to show you a bit later why, because the Orn items are extremely powerful for this comp. So Latent Forge, Portable Forge, Insane, Living Forge, not that great. Uh, small Forge, Medium Forge, Large Forge. Yes, uh, if you're lacking items, if you want, like I said, I love having items with this comp. The more items you have, the, the better you can, I mean, you're strong, you, yeah, you understand. Uh, and then after, these are okay, but uh, not three. I don't like to have three months with only items. I like to have maybe two with uh, items. And then after, try to get something like, uh, not this one, uh, like this or this, right? Uh, so that's why on, I would say STR as well. Um, then finally, the last one that's relevant, I think, is Vegar. But the problem I have with Vegar is because you only want to have these two augments and everything else is trash. So that's why I'm like, yeah, it's okay. But honestly, just go to State Failure Orn is enough. So let's let's talk about Orn, why Orn is so good. So these are all the Orn items. And you have, uh, since most of the time you can choose between three items, you have almost no chance to to be stuck with three items you don't want, right? So I'm going to separate into two uh, types, uh, the carry items and the defensive items. So here I put Sona as an example, and I wanted to show if you have uh, Manazane, Death uh, Fire Grasp, or even Sniper's Focus, these three are god tier on Sona because uh, she has the potential to just cast, then cast, then cast. Like if you look at my uh, history here. I have Manazane Sona, Manazane Sona, Manazane Sona. That's it. Uh, first, first, second. Boom. I don't even think about that. Um, so this why this is one of the best, in my opinion. Um, then after, I mean, Manazane, I would say, okay, okay, I, you know what? I would even do that. I would even do that. Uh, give me another Sona. Okay, Manazane got here. Got here. Uh, S tier is uh, Deathfire Grasp gives very very good um, base stats 50 AP 30 mana that's exactly what you want with Sona and then after allows her to deliver more damage at the beginning of the fight and like I said this is a burst comp so having more damage at the beginning of the fight is exactly what you want to literally one shot everyone and then Sniper's Focus uh, the stats are okay not the best stats but the fact that she can deal much more damage to the back line because she has infinite range. You can literally one-shot carries with this. So honestly, this is also an excellent item. And then after, on the lower side, I would say uh, you have Zonia, but I feel like most of the time it's not that worth because your team doesn't get targeted. So I, that's why I put more like A tier, B tier. And then after you have Obsidian Cleaver. Um, if Sona is your uh, secondary carry, or like a support, but not your main carry. That way you can have a big shred of MR on everyone. Uh, kind of like static, honestly, but not that great. And obviously Trinity Force, I would say like, yeah, okay, fine. If really the choices next to uh, them are really bad, you can just pick that, but it's not that great. Then for defensive items, I do believe the most broken one is Trickster's Glass. 
So it allows you to duplicate Jarvan. So the, the thing with Jarvan is like, everyone likes to be packed because of uh, Ziggs, chalices, you know, this kind of stuff. So it's so easy for Jarvan to just jump and stun them. And if you have two Jarvans, you put one on each side and you make checkmate. No one can stay alive after, like, no one cannot be dunked, by the way. That, that's what I wanted to say. Then after Hulk Crusher, uh, tons of stats. Uh, it's easy to position around. Uh, really go ahead. Uh, Eternal Winter, I think, like, you put that on Jarvan. Imagine, like, you have Jarvan. It slows the attack speed for, like, a few seconds. And after stuns you... And after they, they still have the slow attack speed and then after they stun because they attacked Jarvan too long. You just prevented Zeri, um, Aphelios, who don't have QSS to play. That's it. And even Garen. Even Garen, that's really powerful. Then on the other hand, um, if you have something like Anima Visage, Rendurin, I don't know exactly. I think I would prefer to have this on Shen because I like to have Jarvan to be very mobile and move wherever I want to make sure like I can stun the right units, okay? And then after the rest, uh, like uh, Gold Collector, uh, Death Defiance are trash, you don't even want to pick them. But like since most of them are good, since most of them you can make your boss stronger, I really like Orn for this comp. All right, boys, that was actually a long video, but I really wanted to go into the details on this comp, I think I really understood a lot of things, especially that no one talks about it. No one, everyone thinks that Timo is the best version, but actually I think Timo is the worst version of Multicaster. I would even say Velko's carry is better than Timo. Talia is better than Timo. Sona is better than Timo. So don't play Timo. It's actually a bait. That's what I wanted to say in this video. On the other hand, yesterday I released a video where you can abuse a certain portal to have a guaranteed top four. And I would even say win, actually. I've seen comments about people saying that they won with this secret strategy. So if you're interested in that, check that video and I'll see you at the top of the ladder.